In this video, we're going to find out how we can add these items to the equipment script and the item database so we can instantiate this stuff at runtime onto the skeleton of this character. One thing that I left out in the last video was that once you've changed the names of these items and attached materials and all that sort of thing, you then want to drag it into the gear folder in the resources folder, otherwise you won't be able to instantiate it. So let's do that. Drag all of these down here. Long hair, no, not twice, moustache, and then change everything to lowercase. And just make sure that your spelling is the same as mine, because if it's not, it's not going to work. Okay, so now we've got that, we can get rid of all of these. And let's have a look at these scripts. So let's start with the item database. The item database script is basically a list of items and two different methods for getting one of those items from that list. That's all this, this is really. And the items are based on this class here where there's these three constructors. One is an empty constructor which gives kind of an empty item. Um, and all it does really here is it changes the item ID to negative one. Then I have a constructor for no equipment and I have a constructor for you know facial hair, hair, weapons and armor and that sort of thing. There are some variables here that we're not using at the moment, like that one. And um, yeah, an, an item name, this is not really relevant. The ones that are relevant are the slug, the item type, and the item prefab. Um, nothing else is really important, so I should sort of just take that up here to emphasize that that's what we're doing for now. Obviously, if you were making an actual game, the item name and item description is really, oh, of course, in the item ID. That's also important. And that's just the, and all the stackable is about whether or not we can stack the items in an inventory. Item icon is for drag and drop inventory, that sort of thing. So this is what's important, what we're actually using right now. Okay, if you have a look at the item database, what we have then is uh, for both constructors, we have um, name and description, but for, because we're not using that, I've just made them empty strings. And you can give them a name if you want, um, but I just didn't think it was relevant. And we have the item ID here, and we're going to use this. I'll show you how we use that soon. Then we have the slug, this one, and the, uh, and the item type. So you'll see with these naked items, what we have is one of each type. So we have the legs, naked legs, and that's type legs, naked chest, type chest, bald head, type hair, that sort of thing. And this is basically these item types without any game object instantiated onto the character. And why I have that is um, if you have a look at the equipment script, the equipment script is attached to the character. Okay, so this equipment script, what we have is we have a list called equipped items. And equipped items, what that's responsible for doing is storing a list of all the things that are equipped on the character at any given time. So uh, what we do is when we first start up, we find out how many potential things we can have on the character. And that's determined by this here. Um, so here we have eight things that could be on the character at any one time. We could have something on his legs, on his chest, on his head, like in terms of hair. We could have something on his chin, like a beard, a moustache. We can have something in his right hand. We can have armor on top of whatever's on his chest. And then we can have something on his feet. There's obviously a lot more you could do. There's, you'd, I definitely want to have something for his left hand. You could have rings. You could have um, knee protection, shoulder protection. Uh, you could have something which goes around the neck. I've forgotten what that's called. Kind of like a neck protection thing. Uh, there's so much you could have, right? I think um, Kingdom Come Deliverance, I can't remember how much they have, but it's something like 24 different inventory slots. So there's certainly lots you can do. But for now, we just have eight potential slots. And then what we do is we go through this, um, we iterate uh, eight times, and every time we add an empty item to the equipped items list. Now, so what you'd have if we just had that is you'd have in the equipped items list just a whole bunch of empty items. And just to be sure that we're on the same page and see what's going on, I'm going to run the code and do that. And that's what that looks like. These are eight empty items. Yep, that's what an empty item looks like. Well, obviously, we, that's not very helpful to have a whole bunch of empty items in the list, um, unless you're doing a drag and drop inventory, in which case it is helpful. In this case, it's not. So what I do instead is I go through 
each of the ind indexes, except for feet, I kind of left that out for some reason. Well, there's no reason why I should leave that out. Let's put that in there as well. Um, what did I call that? Yeah, feet. Okay, so then I go into this method here, and what that method does is it takes that ID as a parameter. Now, what this is doing is it's making sure that, pay careful attention to this order, zero is the item type for legs, one is chest, these are the item IDs, and I'm matching these item IDs in the same order to the indexes, the indices of this list. Uh, that's what this, this method is doing. What it's doing is that, let's say I put zero in here, which I have done here. So then it goes through and it finds zero in the equipped items list, um, the index. So that's obviously the first index. And then on that first index, it changes the item to be the item which has the ID of zero, which is um, these naked legs of the type legs. Again, if I were to put a one in there, it would go to the index at one, and then it would change the item from being an empty item, that thing you saw before, just negative one, it would change it from being an empty item to having an, the, so being the item which has the ID of one, which is the naked chest. So now with this, let's have a look at what it looks like now. Okay, so then we have these equipped items, we've got eight of them, and we've got naked legs uh, of type legs, we've got naked chest of type chest, like that. Uh, so we've got a whole bunch of what I'm calling naked items to be distinguished from empty items. Empty items are just nothing. Um, they're items, but they all they have is a value of negative one for the item ID. These are not empty items, but they are items that don't have any game object associated with them. So as you remember, there's actually nothing in the constructor to take a, a prefab, a game object um, prefab, like there is in the um, one for facial hair and weapons and then armor. In the one for no equipment, there is none because that's the whole point of this item is, is it's showing that the person doesn't have anything, um, it's not wearing any armor. And you can see that this would be useful, the fact that we're storing this information, because if you want, if you hit someone without armor, this is one way you could tell that they don't have armor. It's because what they have, in quotes, equipped is nothing on their chest. They've got nothing equipped on their chest. And there's going to be, you know, mechanical consequences to that in the game that I'm making anyway. And in most games, for that matter, most RPGs would have a mechanic like that. So that's what this is doing. Um, now let's have a look at how we actually add items. Now this might be a good time for me to remind you or to mention that the script which drives this equipping item behavior, which allows us to attach the skeleton of the object onto the skeleton of the character, um, is this one here, the Stitcher script. And the Stitcher script was not written by me, it was written by someone with the forum name of Masterprompt, and it can be found here. I need to be totally honest, the Stitcher script is above my programming level. It uses um, C-sharp code, which I don't understand, dictionaries and catalogs and that sort of thing. I just haven't learned it yet. I haven't needed it, well, until now, but then I just use someone else's script. So I'll definitely learn that stuff in the future, but for now it's like looking at hieroglyphics. It's sort of like, I imagine this is how someone who doesn't know programming at all sees code, just like, what is happening? I'd have to have like a two hour session with someone who really knows what they're talking about to talk me through this code and, and enlighten me. All I changed uh, in this script was this here. I was getting a bug um, as I used this script again and again, where it suddenly say, hey, the dictionary already contains, when I try to add an item, it say, hey, the dictionary already contains that key, you can't add it again. And it was extremely annoying. So then I just added this if statement. Look, if it, if, if it already contains this key, the one I'm trying to add, um, just remove that and then add it again. And it seemed to fix it, but I have no idea the consequences of this. Like someone in the comments mentioned um, garbage collection. See, I don't know if I've just made it worse or I've made it better or what. No idea. If you can illuminate me or help shed light on this, that would be brilliant. I'll make a separate video if I really understand what's going on. But enough wittering about that. So basically, it's very hard for me to explain exactly how these work because they rely on these methods as well. And these methods were made by Master Prompt 2. I think I've changed them slightly. I can't remember. Um, 
but yeah, so these methods, especially this where one, you can see this one is goes directly to the, the Stitcher script and does all its magic there. One thing I'll mention is that the avatar is this variable up here, and it's important that the avatar, so the Stitcher script, the equipment script has this variable avatar, and you need to drag the, um, the character that whose skeleton, who has the skeleton that you want these objects to be attached to, into that place, otherwise it won't work and you'll get an error. Okay, so that's what that's all about. Um, but otherwise, it might be a little bit hard for me to explain more than that. I mean, I wrote all this stuff, the add equipment method and the remove equipment and that sort of thing. Um, I didn't write these, and they're a little bit mind-boggling for me. One viewer mentioned that you don't need to destroy the object, but if I don't destroy the object, look what happens. See how it's instantiating out there and not going away, and now I can't remove it. It just now just keeps adding beers the more I click on it and that sort of thing. Um, everything else seems to be working as you'd expect it to work, except the stuff that really matters. Um, so as the way I have the code right now, you definitely do need to destroy it, otherwise you get into some serious trouble. Uh, what if you just don't destroy it there? I wonder what happens then. Okay, at least that works, but it still stays out there, right? Okay, so yeah, it kind of needs to be as it is. If you can make any improvements, let me know. And I'll just talk you through this much at least. So we've gotten to the, in the change gear method, this is where we have the method which equips items, which, um, which becomes that one line of code I mentioned before, which in this case is here. So we go in the change gear script, equipped items, and then there's this one line of code, you can equip whatever you want. Um, but this is the actual method, and what this method does is it takes an item type and it takes a um, slug. As you can see here, what we have is there is the item type and there is the slug. It's being passed into this add or remove method. And then what you do is you iterate through the equipped items list that we've talked about in the equipment script, and you then try and find the equipped item within that list, which has uh, the item type of the one that you want to add. So if you had the item type legs, and it was like a, a slug pants or whatever, uh, then you'd look through the equipped items and you'd find the item which has the item type of legs. When you find that item, which in this case is, is going to be at index zero, because that's how I've programmed it, See, at index zero, you have the, the item which has the item type of legs. Then what we want to do is we want to change that item to not be naked legs anymore. We want it to be pants or whatever slug we're putting in there, putrid pants or whatever, red, red pants, shiny pants, whatever you want to put in there. Um, and that uses a method in the item database script, which its sole responsibility is that if you give it a slug name, it will go through its list of, of items and return an item with the same slug name as that. So that's all that does. And then it sets this to true. And I'm not sure if that Boolean is necessary. Let me just, just humor me. Humor an old man. And let me get just get totally rid of this Boolean because I just don't think it's necessary. I have to confess, the first time I made this system, it is the hardest thing I've ever done because I did it blind, not fully understanding how the Stitcher script works, and I just got bug after bug after bug. So I think there's some residual hackiness in this code. I want to try it without those Boolean statements to see what happens. What was I thinking? Yeah, it like, doesn't matter at all. You do not need those Booleans. Okay, good to know. That's just for my hacky legacy. Let's get rid of all that crap. Oh, so wonderful simplifying code. Such a good feeling, yeah? Getting rid of unnecessary code. And we can delete those as well. Yeah, 
It is not required. Not required. What a good feeling. Simplified stuff. So then that's even more straightforward. You just change the item in the equipped items list to be the same as the item that we're trying to add. Then you pass that very item into the add equipment method, which is in this, in the equipment script. And then you look at that, that item that we're adding and we check to see what item type it is again. And then based on that, we want to change this game object here. So there's a whole bunch of game objects, one for each kind of item we can add to the character at runtime. And then we make this game object equal to uh, what's returned by this method. And it's this which uses the, in order to get this item, it uses this where method, which I don't fully understand as I mentioned a couple of times now, because it relies on the Stitcher script. So I've taken you as far as I possibly can in explaining how this all works. Oh, this is just superficial. It's just changing the name of the item to the, the slug name. Otherwise, it's going to have that ugly, you know, clone in brackets thing, which I hate. And that's about as much as I can explain at this point. Let's just have a quick look at it all. Make sure that it's all good to go. Massage, pants, beard, hair, gambeson, halberd. Right. Okay, well that's exciting. Uh, I guess I guess for your you know homework or whatever, or if you want to elaborate on this, the best thing you could do is add more items and see how that works. And for more experienced programmers, you know, programmers more experienced than me, if you can simplify this code, even though I'm a little bit attached to this, I think it's pretty nice. But if you can simplify this or elaborate on it or improve the Stitcher script, I think there is someone in the comments who has done that. But I'm shy to reply because I'm like, hmm, you've made an improvement, have you? Well, I didn't understand the original, so I probably won't understand your improvements either. Okay. So the next video, I'll probably be getting back into the AI side of things, although I am studying procedural generation, not because I want to create a No Man's Sky style game, but just because there's a way of quickly making scenes that look uh, believably realistic in terms of how the trees and grass and bushes and that sort of thing are spread out, because uh, I want to make quite a lot of different scenes and I don't want to spend hours manually placing them. So I thought I'd learn about procedural generation just so I can sort of mass produce lots of different forest scenes without, you know, dying of boredom. Okay, so hopefully see you in the next video. And if you have any comments or suggestions, I'm always happy to hear them. Thanks for watching.